With the process through creating a shipment and inventory labs changing slightly in the last month, I wanted to create a full tutorial on how to set up a shipment, how to send products out through Amazon FBA through Inventory Lab. I'm Alex and AC Flips on YouTube. I'm a full-time six-figure Amazon seller. In today's video, I wanted to show you how to create a shipment on Inventory Lab. I'm gonna walk through the full tutorial, how to set it up, how to organize your boxes, and the quickest way to get all these things done. Before we jump into the video, if you guys wanted to subscribe to the channel, I'd really appreciate it, but let's jump in. All right, so I am on Inventory Lab right now, uh, basically on the dashboard, but for how we start creating a shipment is we're going to go to list, list and prep. That's gonna bring you to this open page here, and then we want to start with a new batch. Pops up this box here, it's gonna show all these different boxes, but basically what we wanna make sure we have selected is individual products, unless you're doing you know, case pack, which I never ship. Um, obviously we wanna do an FBA shipment, uh, private workflow. I, will, I always put labels on all my items, uh, provide box contents. We actually wanna turn this off with the new workflow and then min max preferences I don't really care to capture and then we're going to create so now it wants us to add a product right I'm going to grab a random mason that I found and we paste it in this upper right corner Amazon and unlisted we can search but for the SKU, I have it set up so it shows the date that I purchased this my buy cost what supplier I have and then the ASIN so it's all easily searchable so you have something like this where it shows you know, the day I purchased it, what my buy cost is. This is what I mostly look at is like, where did I buy this from and what was my buy cost? So if I do sell it, you know, I can see, I can, I can pretty easily calculate what my profit is gonna be or you know, am I buying it profitable? If I wanna replenish it, I can easily see that where I replenished it from. And then the ASIN is a nice quick adder. But we wanna select this can add the total quantity let's say we bought 10 of these we can add you know our average cost per unit when we purchase this and then you can put your website in you know it auto saves what websites you've used in the past so let's just say I bought it from Big Sporting Goods a lot of different websites Nike.com stuff that sells this specific uh, pair of pants if you have an item that expires you can add your expiration date here and then like I said it shows you the SKU which is nice and on the right side here, it'll show you who has the buy box or what price has the buy box. Um, and you can put whatever price you want here, but then it gives you kind of a quick profit uh, per item, which is nice. And then it lists your ROI. And at this $22 buy cost, it's going to give you about $22 in profit and a little over 100% ROI. Uh, one thing to note on this, it'll tell you what prep you need, if any. Since it's a clothing item, you'll have to put it in a poly bag. It'll also tell you if it needs bubble wrap, if it's a fragile item, or anything like that. Uh, it gives you the rank, you know, the category, some certain items that are just nice to know here. Uh, but once you have everything filled out, you want to add that to the batch. Now that it's added to the batch, if you have your printer, Rolo printer, whatever printer you have set up, it'll auto send to your printer. So it'll print out 10 labels for me. If I need to go back and change anything, I can click these, this button on the side. I can edit the listing, go back and change. Let's say I screwed up on the quantity. I actually have 12 of these, so then I can save that. And then since I have 12, it's not gonna auto print two more if you change the quantities. So I go and print two more of these. So then I'll add you know, two more to print and then I'll have 12 total. And then you can add your next ASIN. One nice thing that it shows as you're adding products, it'll tell you all the stats about what you've submitted so far. So with all the information you're submitting on each product, it'll show you, you know, how much you're spent, you how much you spent on each item. It'll show you how much you're going to sell all these things for at the price you listed it, how much profit, you know, average sales rank, all that good stuff. Um, and it's a pretty helpful tool as you're setting this stuff in to see, you know, how much money you're projected to make. Once you're done with all of that, you want to review the batch. It'll take you to this page. It's kind of a summary page of reviewing all the products, making sure you know you once over check or make sure you have everything submitted correctly. Uh, once you have that, you want to want to click the submit button, and that'll take you to this pop up, which you want to sync and request this shipment plan from Amazon. So Amazon's going to create a shipment plan. If you have multiple different products, it's going to you know, create multiple of these potentially. Like if you have shoes, they're gonna to go to a certain warehouse. And then if you have other clothing items, they might go to a different warehouse. So it's gonna create a shipment plan for you. And then you're gonna to wanna to create this plan here. And then it'll create a working plan, right? So that's gonna take you to the working shipments. In the past, Inventory Lab had their own, you know, content where you could say how much is in each box. 
But um, for right now, we have to go with this new method, which is doing this workflow in Amazon. So when you hit that submit button, after you created your shipment plan, it's going to create a box here with all 12 of your items. Like I said, the box content is turned off. So then we're gonna click on that and it's going to redirect you to the Seller Central page. And it's gonna ask you how you want to create your workflow through Send to Amazon. I'm going to select the Return to Old Workflow. This is just the easiest way I've found when you turn the box contents off, how to you know, modify and change what's in each box. Um, so you're gonna have Amazon Partner Carrier, UPS selected. If you think you're gonna need multiple boxes for all the items you're submitting, you wanna select multiple boxes, otherwise they have everything in one box option, which I almost never select. You wanna use the web form. Here you're going to be able to pick what quantity you have here for each box. So basically you're creating the box, you're selecting which quantity goes in that box. It'll be a little bit easier when you have multiple products because it'll be laid out a little bit nicer. But here basically I say, you know, I have two different boxes. One's one size, one's the other size. All the contents in one box, 10 of this item goes in one box. All two of the other goes in the other box. So that's 12 total. Um, you know, number of boxes to achieve that 10 items, obviously one each, um, you know, the weights, and then we're going to confirm that. Then we want to calculate the total shipping cost that Amazon will charge us to ship these boxes. You're going to click agree and then accept the charges. I'm not going to click that right now because I don't want to actually send this stuff in. But then it'll ask you basically what you want to print yours on. Is it going to be, you know, four by six labels? Is it going to be just regular printer paper? Then you select your shipping date and then you can print the labels. So these labels are going to go on your boxes and they're going to be specifically labeled box one, box two. So you want to make sure that as you're packaging these things in each box, you want to label the boxes so you don't get confused which goes on what because if you accidentally send a wrong box to a different warehouse, it's going to delay your items actually arriving to Amazon and getting in your inventory. And it's going to basically delay your sales a lot. And it's a big headache and you don't want it to happen. So just a simple fix is to label your boxes with a little pencil, just right on the box, which is which, and it's gonna make things a lot easier for you. After you print the labels, stick them on your box, you can complete the shipment, and then Amazon's gonna know these amount of boxes are going to show up to their warehouses eventually, and then they can scan all the products in on the inside. Simple as that. All right, I hope you guys found this helpful. This is a complete walkthrough of how to set up a shipment through Inventory Labs, how to transfer it to Amazon's Send to Amazon workflow, and making sure all your things are set up correctly so your products get received as fast as possible. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, and I'll see you in the next one.